Peklik, and this is your March 16th edition of Newsline. Today we have the latest on education reform, the virtual agricultural summit, and an update on the Wheat Kings. But first, James, what can you tell us about the weather? Thanks, Mike. This week, we will begin to warm up and the sun will shine. Today, however, currently it is zero degrees outside and will warm up to just one degree. And we may see some rain or potentially snow at some point today. I'll have more details later in the show. Back to you, Mike. The Brandon School Division released its kindergarten to grade 12 strategy with a focus of putting students first. The government's plan is to combine 37 school divisions into one provincial education authority. The French School Division will still remain the same. They plan to shift resources to the classroom to ensure that students are learning and achieving their goals. They want to ensure that teachers, staff and leaders have the knowledge and tools they need and give parents and caregivers more opportunity to participate. With Manitoba being one of the highest spending provinces on education, changes are coming. CAMSAC RCMP are asking for the public's help in locating 15-year-old Jackson McDonald. He was last seen leaving a cottage on foot in the Jubilee subdivision area of Duck Mountain Provincial Park around 12.30 a.m. on March 14th. A cash reward is being offered for any information. He is described as 5'6 with a slim build. He has brown hair, blue eyes, and wears braces. The boy was last seen wearing a black hoodie, black Adidas pants, and black running shoes. Anyone with information about Jackson McDonald is asked to contact CAMSAC RCMP or Saskatchewan RCMP. The eligibility to receive the vaccine is once again expanded. Individuals 77 or older and First Nations people 57 or older are now able to book vaccine appointments. Prairie Mountain Health cases were back at zero today, but Manitoba's positivity rate is increasing again. The number of coronavirus variant cases has nearly doubled in Manitoba, and pop-up vaccination clinics in rural and northern Manitoba communities will begin offering its services this week. Three Brandon businesses are coming together to form a new experience for Brandon shoppers. Brandon's green spot will soon be the new home for local flower shop, The Bloom Box, and will be the second home for Brandon's Shea Angela Bakery. Shea Angela's James Chambers says, this won't just affect the people of the Brandon, but the business community of the city as well. What it does, what it signals to the business community, what we're hoping is that they see that strong, healthy, independent local businesses can work together to bring a myriad of services and, and deliver you know, really good quality, really good value to the people of West Van. Though the location is currently under construction, visitors can expect the first of these new changes to take place by the end of May with full operations slated for summer. The Manitoba government is celebrating Agricultural Awareness Day through a virtual event. Celebration has highlighted advances in agriculture, protein, innovation and emerging agricultural technologies. The virtual event will feature a number of presentations with speakers from all around Manitoba. The Farm and Food Awareness Act was made official in legislation making Agricultural Awareness Day the third Tuesday in March. We'll have more news after the break. First, let's see how the markets are doing. A plea to Americans from top U.S. health officials urging everyone to keep up public health measures for fear of coronavirus case surge when the weather gets warmer. And the CDC would, could change some guidelines when it comes to social distancing at schools. Mandy Gaetcher has the latest on the war against COVID-19 in today's Health Minute. In just about every state, the more contagious coronavirus variant first identified in the UK has been found. It's still projected to become the dominant variant in the US by the end of this month or early April. In some states, uh, Florida and California, it's up to 25%. In other states, it's lower. 
With travel hitting a pandemic record over the weekend, top U.S. health officials fear a potential spike in COVID-19 cases. We have seen footage of people enjoying spring break festivities maskless. This is all in the context of still 50,000 cases per day. I'm pleading with you for the sake of our nation's health. These should be warning signs for all of us. Cases climbed last spring, they climbed again in the summer. They will climb now if we stop taking precautions when we continue to get more and more people vaccinated. Meanwhile, the CDC is reviewing new data on physical distancing after a study published in the journal Clinical Infectious Diseases showed similar infection rates for mask-wearing students and staff at Massachusetts public schools at six feet and three feet of physical distancing. The question actually prompted more studies to be done, so we know more are forthcoming. We're taking all of those data carefully and revisiting our guidances in that context. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Two of the biggest bands in Celtic punk rock scene will be live streaming concerts on St. Patrick's Day. Rick Demigella talked with both bands for the Hollywood Minute. When the pandemic lockdown started just before St. Patrick's Day 2020, Boston's Dropkick Murphys stepped up to entertain fans with a live streamed concert. The last St. Patrick's Day was put together on 48 hours notice because it was right as things were changing and being shut down. This one we've had time to think about and prepare. The Murphys are doing it again this year. This St. Patrick's Day will be more of a in the round, so to speak. It's going to be four sides of video wall surrounding us and us in the middle. So if no audience can be there, well, we might as well play to each other. Los Angeles' Flogging Molly will be live streaming from Wayland's Pub in Dublin, Ireland. It's actually the first place we in Flogging Molly ever played in Ireland, which makes it even more special. And it's a, it's a great music venue. Part of the proceeds from ticket sales will go to bands and crews in need. Our good friends at Sweet Relief who are um, helping to just give support to um, all of the, well, out of work bands and crew out there that are struggling right now. Already wearing green in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. With the Manitoba restrictions lifting, Funtime Pottery can now reopen their spring break camp for kids. The recent restriction change announced that day, camps are allowed to run but with limited numbers. Everyone is to maintain a safe distance from each other with plexiglass barriers in place. From March 29th to April 1st, the studio will be closed to the public to keep numbers in check. There will be eight socially distanced tables and only siblings may sit together. So we are 25%. Um, normally we can seat 44 in here, so we are taking 11 children. And we are able to split them up. Um, the shop will be closed. Since kids have not had the opportunity for camps with the COVID restrictions, this spring break activity has completely sold out. That's it for news. James Didick is up next with Newsline Weather. Your alternative ed, CJ 106. I'm James Diddick, and this is your Newsline Weather. Today it looks gray and gloomy out, but the temperatures are still nice and cool. Currently in Brandon, it feels like a very dreary, cloudy day. Right now, it's zero degrees and there is a 30% chance of snowfall. Winds are at 10 kilometers from the northeast. It will warm up to plus one this evening, that chance of snow turning to a chance of rain. Winds coming up from the northeast up to 20 kilometers an hour. Overnight, it will drop down to minus two, feeling like minus seven. That chance of rain flipping back to a chance of snow. 
Winds will die down slightly to speeds up to 10 kilometers from the northeast. Looking at our five-day forecast, tomorrow we will see a clearing sky, high of plus four, low of minus seven. There is a slight wind chill that will make that low feel like minus 10. Thursday we'll begin to see the week warm up, sunny sky and a high of plus seven, low of minus three. Friday will continue to shine and warm up to a high of 11, low of plus one. Saturday is calling for a 60% chance of rain, but temperatures will remain warm with a high of 12. The low will, however, drop to minus three. On Sunday, the clouds are expected to clear up to a partly cloudy. High of plus nine, low of plus four. Moving on to across the province, we will see that the cloudy conditions are stretching across the region. Winnipeg is currently plus six, Portage plus five, both mostly cloudy. Dauphin is seeing periods of light snow at minus one. Nipo and Carberry are both seeing plus two and have a 30% chance of rain or snow. Killarney has plus two and mostly cloudy. Minidosa is a little cooler with minus one and periods of light snow. Verdon is at plus two and a small chance of rainfall. Looking at our seasonal temperatures, we usually get minus one for our high and for our low, minus 12. We set our record high back in 2012 with 21.3 degrees. Our record low was 29.4, which was set in 1974. To recap our currents, it is zero degrees and mostly cloudy, winds coming from the northeast up to 10 kilometers an hour. That's it for your Newsline weather. After the break, Juliana will be back with sports. She joins us now for Newsline Sports. Juliana, we finally have the Wheat Kings back in action. That's right, Mike. The Wheat Kings started their shortened season this past weekend from their bubble in Regina. They lost their first game against the Moose Jaw Warriors on Friday with a final score of 4-3. Saturday, they were able to come back strong with a 3-2 victory against their Manitoba rival, the Winnipeg Ice. The Wheat Kings will face off against the defending 2018-19 WHL champions, the Prince Albert Riders, puck drops tonight at 5 p.m. from Regina's Brand Center. The Brandon's Whiskey Jacks are being moved to North Dakota this year. The Expedition League announced yesterday the relocation for Wheat City's baseball team for the 2021 season. The temporary move was made because of the border closure between Canada and the United States and because of the current sport event restrictions in Manitoba. The Whiskey Jacks had their summer season canceled last year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. They will be playing in Grand Forks, North Dakota with a full 64 game schedule starting on May 25th. The ACC Cougars signed a new recruit for their 2021-22 soccer roster. Madison Kilburn has experience in both net and on the field. The 5-2 goalkeeper from Nipua started playing at a young age and stood out competing for her hometown high school soccer team. She has also played competitively for Minidosa Mustangs Club and the Senior Women's Soccer League. Cougars coach says Madison will be a great addition to the team next season with a strong soccer and futsal background. That's all we got for sports. Mike, back to you. Thanks, Juliana. I heard the Jets lost last night. Tomorrow night, so go Jets. All right. Thanks, Juliana. Today we're featuring two Westman residents that received the prestigious honor 150 awards for volunteering in their community. Dave the Hewson of Swan River Valley has been a part of the Swan Valley Rotary Club since 1964. He's led many community projects like the Rotary Soccer Fields and the Swan Valley Rotary Auction. Edgar Rothney of Strathclair has been a part of the Strathclair Agricultural Society since 1964. He spent many hours volunteering and organizing the Society's big annual fair every year. We will feature Westman residents at the end of each show for the rest of the week. That's it for today's edition of Newsline. We'll be back tomorrow. From everyone, have a great day and thanks for watching.